What is up, guys? Welcome on back to TK's Garage. And just when I think we're done, or I'm not talking about Napleton Auto Group anymore, we get more inside information, and this time it's from employees. Mm. Yes, it's a pinky out video. So this isn't a bunch of hearsay or this employee said this or this employee said that. This is in Cook County Court in Illinois where Napleton is being sued. So let me break down this story to you really simple and, and then I'll give you the, you can literally go pull the, the orders. They're, they're orders in the United States District Court there as well as uh, Cook County. So we have a sales guy who will remain unnamed, all right? But if you dig deep enough into it, you probably can figure out who it is, but whatever. So we have a sales guy, sells a customer, works out a great deal on a vehicle through a Napleton dealership. Customer loves the vehicle, gets a, an extra 150,000 mile warranty on top of the car, uh, loves it, goes out, drives it, Two months later, vehicle gets told. Insurance pays off stuff, you know, things are getting situated. But he still has this 150,000 mile warranty there. It's only two months old. They paid, what, 6,500 for it. There should still be somewhere around 6,300 and some change left over. If they just cancel that warranty, he goes back to go deal with his same sales guy that he dealt with before and find out that he was moved to another dealership. Customer goes and finds him at this other dealership. They work out the same deal that he did for the other car two months ago. And the general manager calls this sales guy into the office and says, we're going to sell him another $6,500 warranty. We're not canceling this warranty. Um, or transferring the balance from that warranty to this warranty. They're basically trying to screw the customer and get the sales guy to go along with it. Well, the sales guy has some ethics and is like, nah, I'm not doing it. Uh, well, the finance department goes through with the deal anyway. The general manager evidently sends the sales guy home. They do the deal and they screw the customer out of $6,500. Now, I know you're going to say, well, why does that matter? It matters because uh, it's wrong and fraud when you tell a customer that you're going to transfer that balance over, just buy this one, we'll get this one canceled, they'll, they'll cancel each other out when you have zero intentions of doing it. And of course they didn't. And it led to these lawsuits. Now, I'm going to put that right here. So as you can see here, you can see the uh, the different lawsuits and the, uh, let me see if I can get to the part where the settlement or the order is there. Um, I don't think they get into the monetary effect, but I'm sure the customer was made whole. What The, the biggest thing for me is this. Could you imagine... If you had an auto group like Mapleton, right? And they just did things the right way and had that many dealerships, how much money they would save, how much money they would make as a company, as a business, without having to deal with lawsuits. I'm sure the attorney fees were more than they end up having to settle with the customer for. So that $6,500 warranty that they screwed this guy out of Ends up costing that dealership, what, 50 grand, 60 grand? Was it worth it? You know what I'm saying? As a dealer, I try to do everything above board. Granted, I'm just a wholesaler. but And I don't sell cars regularly to, to dealerships or whatever. But if I have a dealer friend from, say, Texas that says, hey, I'm looking at this truck at Mannheim or whatever. Can you go put hands on it? Can you go look at it? Can you tell me what the situation is? I, I'll go do that for them. just about, I don't know, man, I guess 
you know, the, the cliche that all car dealers are scumbags is mostly true. It sucks because there are good dealerships. There are great mom and pop dealership brands for Dodge, Chevy. I know some of them uh, in Kansas and other places. They're great. It's just sad to see this kind of shit. So check this out. Customer gets screwed out of the 6500. And what do they do the very, like not even a month later? They let the employee go for not playing ball for fraud. They fired the employee for performance issues when the guy has been a part of your, working for your auto group since 20, I think it was 2014 to 2021 at one dealership and then moved to, or to 2023 and then you moved over or yeah to this other dealership at the end of 2023 to now at 2024 and they cut you loose um and you got people coming from another dealership to come do deals it doesn't sound like performance issues it sounds like retaliation to me it sounds like they fired this guy because he was honest napleton if you buy a car from Napleton Auto Group, you're literally just supporting scumbags. Straight up. Any Napleton dealership. I don't care. And here's the thing. I used to I used to do business with Napleton in North Carolina. They they had a Volkswagen dealership out there. They used to service because you know I didn't want to go all the way to Raleigh. They used to service my Audi. They serviced my S8, my A8L, the uh the Q7. The Volkswagen CC, which I purchased through them, like the, all of that, man. Would I ever do business with Napleton Auto Group again? No. No, I wouldn't. 100%, absolutely 100%, no. Wouldn't do it. Just because of this stuff. Not, not even the, you know, I keep saying that credibility and all that stuff starts from the top and trickles down, right? And you have a guy who runs that auto group who's been convicted of hmm and doesn't know that no means hmm, no. You, you, I'm sure you guys can infer what, I'm, what I mean there. Can't say it here on YouTube because for whatever reason they don't think it's uh, appropriate. But when you're convicted of hmm, no means no, and you still run this auto group and you're still taking part in scumbag activities, you get hit with an almost $10 million fine from the Federal Trade Commission for charging more money for black and brown customers than you did for Caucasians that bought cars to your dealership by tacking on extra fees that didn't exist, that didn't do... Like, you wash the car. That was a $2,100 fee. So when you see that kind of culture at a dealership, in an auto group, this doesn't surprise me. Fuck that customer. We're going to get this $6,500 out of them. I can't co-sign it, man. I don't like it. I'm glad to see that they got slapped. I hope that this continues to happen. More and more customers continue to slap them with this crap. And they put a stop to it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Because this is stupid. It's just stupid. Oh, today's video was brought to you guys by Destroyer1320.com. If you have a Mopar product, Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, even Ford F-150s, you can get your vehicle protected from somebody just pulling that neutral strap and pushing it down the road or copying your VIN number and making a key. Go check out Destroyer1320.com today, and I appreciate them for everything they do for our community.